The Idrissian kingdom was a Thracian tribal amalgam of many different Thracian tribes. They were a very prominent raider and warrior society to the north of Greece. They fought many wars with the Macedonians, including Philip II as well, prior to the start of the mod. But when Philip II marched north in the 340s BC, he conquered the Thracian states and kingdoms, leading them to be at a very low ebb. But of course, at the start of the mod, we start in a pretty poor and weak position. But today, I'm going to show you how you can expand from your three really poor starting regions to 10 regions within about 14, 15 turns, whilst making some decent money now and also having a relatively strong army filled with some of the most overpowered units in the game. Stay tuned to find out how, guys. Hi, guys. Welcome back. I am Red Zed, and today we are back with another faction guide video for RTR Imperium Serectum. And today we are doing one of my favorite factions, the Adrissian Kingdom, out here in Thrace, full of Thracian boyos ready to rip your face off. Yes, they are. They are here, ready to smash everyone around them. But there are some certain things with them that make them a little bit weaker than what you might expect early on in the campaign. Now, of course, many of you will have been expecting the Antigonid Guide to come after all of the minor Greek cities. But what I'm going to do, guys, is I'm going to group all the Diadochi together, or at least all the big ones. So the Seleucids, the Antigonids, and the Ptolemies will be all together at the end because they're going to be quite large guides and maybe quite long, maybe even two-part guides. So we are going to be doing those ones all together at the end and going through the rest of them as we go along. But the Idrissian Kingdom, they start here out in Thrace, surrounded by factions. Not a huge amount of rebel territories around here. There's four, but there's about the equivalent number of factions. We've got the Asti, the Kabyle, we've got Byzantium down here, the generic Thracians bordering as well, as well as the Seleucids, who we start actually allied with. And then over here, we have the Bessi, the Trebali, and down to our southwest is the Antigonid Kingdom, of course, as well well so a relatively busy start right from the start of the game as the Adrissians that you're going to be having now you start with three settlements the first of which is Adrissa which is a large town but a very small one only just become a large town then you have Suthopolis over here which is a small town as well nearly ready to upgrade though but then you have Corellopolis which is a town with only 400 people in which is just insane it is a really 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 bad city to get started with however you do have plenty of routes for expansion and we'll be going through that later in the video so let's talk about the strengths and weaknesses of the Adrissian kingdom and the first strength is that the Adrissian kingdom has one of the best little rosters in the game now it's not the most expansive roster as you can see but you get a very strong shock infantry and shock cavalry and skirmisher roster now you don't get phalanxes or anything like that but you do not need them because you have one of the most overpowered for its price units in the game in terms of the Romphi Foroi here. You also get access to the Thracian Royal Warriors who are absolutely beastly as you can see. And you also get access to some fantastic cavalry which is the Thracian Royal Noble Cavalry over here amazing cavalry unit and they have javelins to throw into the enemy as well as insane melee stats along with that you also unlock the seeker cavalry which is an armor piercing cavalry unit as well so fantastic unit roster and you also get armor piercing peltas too guys 
Like, these guys are all about armor piercing, and this is going to do you a world of good when you come up against the heavily armored factions of the Antigonids and the Greeks and some of the Eastern Greek factions that are around this area as well. You are going to do fantastically well against them. Your second strength is that you do, in fact, start with a relatively decent army as well. You get three units of these insane Ronfi Foroi, and wait until we get into the battles. I will show you how insane these guys are. They're pretty trash along Spearmen, but the really good Thracian Peltas, and the Hippogontistai, which is pretty much a Prodromoi unit, but slightly better than a Prodromoi as well. So you do start with a fantastic little army that you can go for some conquests with very early on. That about does it for the strengths, guys. It's all about the units and the armies because we'll move on to the weaknesses. And there are definitely some weaknesses with the Adrissians that you're going to face right from the start. The first weakness is that you start in an economically terrible, terrible situation. You are losing 3,200 gold right from the start with not much ability to really expand it this place over here, you can't even put it onto high taxes. And this place only has 400 people in it. It's pretty much a village. It is not a town at all. It is terrible. So, you know, you really don't have much economic capability from the start. But you're going to have to go and conquest in order to get it. The problem being, that brings us on to our second weakness. Pretty much most of the immediate territory around you is not rich either. It is small towns like these, small towns. Both of these rebel settlements are towns. And the only real good territory that is around you is owned by stronger, larger factions like Pontic Pentapolis, like the Seleucids, like the Antigonids. So to take some good land, you're going to have to go further afield. And you're also going to have to, you know, risk the wrath of a much larger faction. And your third weakness, guys, is that you do, in fact, only start with three, yes, three generals. And one of them, your faction leader, is 55. So he could die at any moment indeed. So you really don't start with a large amount of generals and characters. So you've got to be really careful with them early in the game. If they die, you die. The campaign dies. So here we are with the Thracian roster, guys. And don't be fooled. Although it looks quite small, it is small but mighty. It is a fantastic roster, especially if you're like me and you love to play this sort of play style. You start with your basement unit, which is a long spearman. Pretty trash, mainly levy. That's the unit you're going to be garrisoning a lot of towns with, along with your sort of slingers and your archers as well. But your second unit, your sort of meat and potatoes of most of your armies is this unit, the Thracian Romphio Foroi. An insanely good unit. Now, do not be put off by those stats. 25 defense seems tiny, and it is very, very low. But this unit is about as much about defense as Slenderman trying to play rugby. There is no defense in the minds of these guys at all. But this unit, I've got to stress to you, is probably pound for pound the most effective unit for its cost in the game, it costs about 1,600 gold to recruit, but it has 14 melee attack, of which it is armor piercing with javelins as well, and it frightens nearby enemy infantry. And if you stack these guys, you will have a Gema running from them in no time at all. The frightened nearby enemy infantry guys is rather OP in the game, and it really does make everyone run from you. These guys are insane. Do not underestimate them, and I will show you later on how good they can be. You also get the Adrissian Royal Warriors, who just look absolutely magnificent, don't they, my friends? They look 
so good. And they are a very, very good unit. Unfortunately, they don't frighten nearby enemy infantry. And they're not armor-piercing. But they are a very solid unit with 19 morale, 15 melee attack, and 37 defense. Nothing more needs to be said about them. They look awesome and are awesome. Your skirmisher roster is also very, very good. Because you get the Thracian archers, which have 8 missile attacks. So that's already better than the Greek ones. No defense again. So they are going to die very quickly quickly to missiles the same thing with the slingers they are pretty bad they're going to die very quickly to missiles so get the archers instead and maybe garrison with the slingers because they are very cheap but your thracian peltas has an armor piercing pr uh, secondary weapon which in this case i believe is their sword um i'm pretty sure it's their swords can someone please confirm i'm i'm pretty sure whenever it's the secondary weapon it means it is the sword whenever they have a javelin as well but they are a very very good um very very good skirmisher unit with 10 missile attack i know they've got very low defense again but like i say nothing about the thracians is about defense your skirmisher cavalry roster you have light lancers who are pretty much not amazing but they are very very quick these cavalry guys very quick they're for there for early game and for cleaning up the enemy when you need to. You've also got the Hippocontisti, basically the Thracian Prodromoi. They are okay, and they're going to do a decent job in the game. Pretty much all of this roster as well, guys, is fast moving. I think the only ones that aren't are the Royal Warriors. Yeah, I believe that's the only unit here that is not fast moving. I believe these guys are fast moving. Let's just have a look. But because they're light infantry, they're fast anyway. No, I don't think they are. But uh, most of the units are fast moving, which is insane. If you watch these move, uh, units move on a battlefield and compare them to a hoplite, they move so much faster. And then you come to the big boys, the Thracian Noble Cavalry. This is one of the best cavalry units in the game, guys, with the 18 morale, 14 melee attack, 2 javelins to fire, and 30 defense with a 35 charge yes they are insanely good and your general is very similar there's not much to put between these and the greek general but i would say overall the thracian generals are slightly better just because of those extra javelins they get to fire into the enemy and then your reforms which i believe is just to get to 75 turns you get the sicker cavalry which is an armor piercing cavalry unit guys you don't see many of these they wield this little seeker sword, as you can see, which is an armor-piercing sword. So if you are having problems with cataphracts or hetairoi, these are the units for you because they're going to cut through them like butter. I also wanted to just show off that the Thracian area, much like the Greek area, is so full of AOR units that if you think this unit roster is slightly limited and small, there are... So many good AOR units, like the Agrianian infantry over here. A really, really good uh, Peltas unit that can fire missiles uh, and has an armor-piercing weapon as well. You've got the Thynoi Clubman. They're not a good unit, but they're funny, and I love them. So they're there too. And we've also got, say, the uh, Pionian Cavalry, which also has an armor-piercing alt attack with their sword which is insane again guys so there are lots of aor units to bolster your armies with around this region overall the style of the thracians is smash and grab it is shock it is ambushes it is going skirmishing and bringing out the big guns for the final blow it's all about shock and awe a fantastic unit roster and incredibly fun to use as well so let's move on to the building roster. And there's only a couple of things to show you that are different from the rosters of the Greeks. Now, you do not get the third level of blacksmith as the Thracians, which is a little bit annoying, but that's fine. Makes perfect sense. You also don't get all the way up the levels in the traders and the ports. You still get the same with farming and river ports and grain imports. You don't get highways, unfortunately, unlike the Greeks, and you don't get aqueducts 
either. But you do get the Bardic Circle, which is actually a really nice building. It gives you lore, public order, and public order bonus due to happiness, as well as a population growth bonus too, which is really good. But the temples that you get as the Adrissians are rather interesting. The first one, Hebelazis. Yes, I said that perfectly, my friends. The awesome temple of Hebelazis. This is a temple that gives you both experience and morale. So it's like the temple of Dioscuri for the Greeks. And it's a really, really fantastic temple for all those recruitment hubs. That three morale bonus is insane. Plus four experience on these guys. That means these guys can start with 18 melee attack and 29 defense, making them an insanely powerful unit overall. Your second temple, the Temple of Dionysus, is just the standard temple of Dionysus. It is a 40% happiness, 20% income at the fourth level. So it's an income and happiness level. And then the final one, the Temple of Hero, is your law temple. So you do get a decent law temple. It also reduces defensive building construction cost, but I don't really see that as very consequential because that's just walls and who cares about building walls, I'm not going to lie, uh, apart from the Romans, of course. But yeah, public order, happiness, and law. This is your law temple you want to build everywhere else. In your homelands, uh, sorry, everywhere outside your homelands where you get corruption. This is the temple Dionysus where you want to build in your homeland in economic hubs and economic hubs. And this is the temple Hebelesis that you want to build in the land that you are going to recruit from. So guys, you rejoin a slightly iller Red Zed as we go through the starting moves of the Adrissians. If you did manage to get to this point in the video, guys, a like and a subscribe would be massively appreciated if you think that this video has been a good enough guide for you guys. Now, the Adrissians. I've actually been playing the Adrissians as I uh, click on extreme mode if i can actually click on it and not tab out by accident <laughs> if we click on the extreme mode and show you that we are of course playing on very hard very hard um i've actually been playing the adrissians in my own time for fun i was playing on hard hard no extreme mode but the adrissians i've got to say are a very very fun nation to play you can kind of go in many different directions, like we've said for many, many of the other factions. And there are so many factions around you. And you do start at war with a couple of the factions. I believe if we have a look at our diplomatic standing, for some reason, diplomatic standing is always hard. But you start at war with the Galatians. They're not a worry. They're a while away. Uh, and Tylus for some reason as well. So it makes sense to go north early on. But there are a few tactics that you can use if you want to start with. So the first tactic that I would say is a very viable tactic is to go straight east right from the start and go after the Asti, then take out Byzantium, and you will have two lovely port towns over here, which is going to make up for your incredibly poor starting territory. Now, the second tactic is to go north. That is to go after Kabyle and then straight onto the Tylus or Pontic Pentapolis and start taking this really rich land along the coast there. Now, uh, one tactic I would not recommend is to go for these rebel settlements right off the bat. Because, of course, like we've spoke about many times, it's always better to take out rival factions uh, rather than letting them get strong. Rather than taking out rebel settlements. So don't go for the rebel settlements right away. And don't go down south. Because down south, we have two rather scary enemies. We've got the Seleucids and the Ptolemies. And, of course, the Antigonids, which are going to be an enemy later on. But right from the start, not the enemy that you want to face right away. So we'll move on to my recommended tactic. And the reason why it's recommended is fairly obvious. It's because we see the Bessie over here, the big Bessie boyos. They have two settlements, admittedly both that are towns, um, that have no walls and pretty much no garrisons. So why would we not look an open goal in the face and take it 
rather than skying the ball or hitting the crossbar. So I think this is the best way to go initially, in my opinion. But I will just mention, of course, guys, you've always got to play with the RNG in mind. You've got to play with what happens in your game. And what I would recommend is starting with this tactic and then doing whatever sort of is the best option for you afterwards. So when I played my own game for fun, I took out the Bessie, I came back for a bit of retraining, and then the Maidy actually attacked me. They had taken this land, Scaptopara, and they attacked me. And what I did then was go after the Maidy. I took them out. But that was not my plan. At that point, my plan was to swing back east and go this way. But I had to delay that because the Maidy attacked me. So you've just got to react to what happens. But let's uh, toggle the, uh, the old fog of war back off, guys. And we are going to get our army out of the settlement. Now, with your generals, it is slightly random uh, what you get with your generals. Like, when I started playing by myself, I'm pretty sure I got different stats to what these guys have. But we're going to leave behind one of the long spearmen. Because although they are slightly, slightly more expensive than the Peltas, the Peltas are actually very, very useful. At the start of the game. We're also going to take Raisdos, our faction leader, out of the city. We're also going to put all the tax rates up as high as possible. Over here, as high as possible. So that's not quite uh, able to do so. And we're going to get our spy and go and have a look at what's going on with the old Bessie over here. Just to check where their army goes next turn. Now, where is my diplomat? The diplomat is over here. We do actually start, I believe, with an alliance with the Seleucids. So we don't need to worry about that for now. What I want to do is try to secure an alliance with the Trabali because they do border us. And they have a relatively large amount of land. And if I take this land, it leaves us open to the score Disky and the um, Gete up here as well. So we do not want to have to be drawn into a war for very poor land for little reward. We want to get to the rich land along the coast of the Pontos Euxinos and the Sea of Marmara and into the Aegean as well. We want to get that rich land rather than the poor inland land. Land, land, said land. How many times can you say land in one video, my friends? First things first, though, we are going to build a palisade here because... It is open right now. We don't want what's going to happen to the Bessie to happen to us. Secondly, we're going to go for a land clearance in there and a land clearance in Suthopolis. Now, the reason being, that's going to allow us to recruit some more Romfai Foroi. Initially, garrisons are going to have to be long spearmen and peltas, but later on, we'll replace them with slingers. All that sort of thing. Now, we could even go for something slightly more expensive but i think the land clearance overall is just the better option anyway we're going to come across to diopolis over here going to auto resolve 36 men not a problem at all now diopolis is only a town so we are just going to occupy it should not be a problem for us we're going to merge in these men there and unfortunately we didn't take many losses so we are going to go straight out of the city, the reason being is it's going to give us a little bit more movement. And secondly, what we can kind of do by coming out of the city here is baiting the enemy into attacking us. We're also going to pop that up to very high and instantly we're making a lot more money. So we're going to try and bait the Bessie army into attacking us because they start with a rather smaller army than we start with at Philippopopopopopopopopopopopopopopopopopopopopopopopopopopopopopopopopopopopopopopopopopopopopopopopopopopopopopopopopopopopopopopopopopopopopopopopopopopopopopopopopopopopopopopopopopopopopopopopopop
you don't need to worry about that. But when you're on hard and very hard, it's so difficult to get an alliance that you want everything in your favor. So you can maybe cancel that and go for an alliance with the Gete. But we're just going to accept this ceasefire for now. Friends. We don't need to be at war with Tylus. We don't border them. And their land is very poor. I don't want to gun for it at all. So we're going to accept that. We're also going to try and go for some trade rights. Almost see whether we can do that. Awful. And try and, of course, scam the AI out, AI out of some money for maybe 500 gold for some map information. 250. I mean, it's better oh, than nothing right now, isn't it, my friends? And as predicted, my friends, the Bessie did come out. Now, in my test runs, I've done this a couple of times. And the first time, they pretty much came out with everything. Now, the second time, they came out with about three quarters. And here, they're only coming out with about half. I don't know why they go for this fight. There's just something in the Bessie that makes them want to fight, which I absolutely love. But yeah, this should be relatively easy. They've got nothing to worry about. We've got cavalry, infantry, and Peltast advantage. So, yep, I don't know what they're thinking. And we've also got defender advantage, but they may actually withdraw from the battle. So we will have to try and take them out. But let's get on to the battlefield, my friend. So here we are in the battle, guys. I'll just show you some of these units. We have the Long Spearman over here. Very nice unit indeed. We've got the Romfei Foroi. A little bit muddy at the minute. I know you've seen these units actually in the unit roster, haven't you? So I don't need to do it again. Uh, the main thing that you will notice though, as soon as I press start battle, is how fast these goddamn units are. Honestly, they are insanely fast. So we are going to use that to our advantage. Of course, when you are fighting Thracians, it doesn't really matter too much because everyone's pretty fast. Um, everyone's equally fast. I'm also going to use my Hippocontisti. They're very much like Prodromoi, but I am going to use them as a strike force and a running down force rather than anything else. Remember, though, the one thing you need to be wary of, guys, is the Romfei Foroi. If we get these guys, we're going to give them a war cry. Make sure you war cry them so they get a bit of bonus attack, all that sort of thing. They should get a bit of bonus attack and defense from that because they go a bit crazy. The one thing you need to worry about, though, is the fact that these guys are not good against cavalry, remember? They are not exactly a cavalry, uh, anti-cavalry unit. So you do need to be wary of that. We have absolutely ruined them, though. You guys go after the Thracian Peltas. Our long spin, you can see, are not very good, especially against the Romfo Foroi. So we are going to do that. We're also going to get these guys there. We're going to go into the Peltas there. And you can see we've got Peltas coming in to our guys here as well. They're going to chase down the long spearmen. I really don't mind that. We're also going to go after the Thracian Peltas. Should be a relatively easy little victory there. But you can just see how fast these guys run compared to the Greeks. Like, look at them. They are so much faster. I know it's, uh, it may not be easy to see right now, but I promise you, if you play Greeks for a little bit and then you play these guys, you will really notice how fast they are. You can also see the power of the frightened nearby enemy infantry. These guys have just routed pretty much straight away. So what we're going to do, we're going to uh, chase everyone down, guys, and an easy victory for us. How many did we lose, lose in the end? 18%, uh, not bad at all, my friends. There we go, guys, a nice and easy victory to start the episode off. Let's get back on the campaign map. Here come the Asti asking for trade rights as well, guys. Now, do remember that if a, an AI offers you trade rights, it is a pretty much, you know, a bordering AI nation. It is pretty much a, not guarantee, but a, a very high chance that they will attack you soon. So we are going to accept that oh, for thanks. now. We're also going to try to take some map information from them. I don't want an alliance with them sorry sell map information to Would them you consider i do not want an friends? alliance because of course i want to take these guys out as well so for now we'll take the trade rights so you can see with our victories we didn't even lose that much money then in fact we even gained money from where we were which is insane because it's showing minus a thousand but i think we gained a bit of money from you know sacking the camps all that sort of thing but we are just going to go straight for better Besser Para over here. We're going to auto resolve 48 deaths. That is not a problem at all. Now, Besser Para again is also a town. So we are just going to occupy. The good thing here now is that our long spearmen have actually lost a few men. So they are a better 
gar well, they're a worse garrisoning unit, but because it's a happy place, they're a better garrisoning unit because they're nice and cheap. Secondly, we're just going to jump straight onto there. Looks like they've just got a general who is the same as our general. Yep. Same man, same man. Could be brothers, <laughs> could be twins. Uh, but they have Ronfei Foroi too, so it's going to be a difficult-ish attack. Now that we've got a little bit of extra cash, we're also going to have a look to see whether we can build the Palisades in Diaspolis. So we're going to delete this recruitment to start with. We're now making money, so we're going to build that in there. We're also going to delete level 2 recruitment here. Now, if they do change this at some point, guys, you won't be able to get that money. So you're just going to have to struggle on slightly more uh, going forward, but that's okay. Everywhere else is building, so what we are going to do is recruit some more. We cannot actually afford, we are about 30 gold off being able to afford a unit of long spearmen to garrison, which is very, very annoying. We're gonna go for trade rights and an alliance with Trebali. Okay, we'll go for trade rights, it's generous. Then let's try for an alliance now. I'm gonna offer the map information as well. No, unfortunately on very hard, an alliance with the Trebali does not seem likely. However, you want to try to push for that, even if it means giving out some land or giving them some money, because this is a large border that we share with them, and I do not want it to be, uh, you know, overtaken by them. These are the lands up here, and again, it's not exactly very rich land. You can see it's just towns and large towns, so we really don't want to have to be bogged down in a war with these fools up here. I want to go after much richer targets, which is the Asti, Kabile, and then down into Thrace proper. So, uh, yeah, we really don't want to have to worry about those fools over there. So, let's end the turn then, guys, and let's see whether they'll actually sally out or do something crazy. Uh, but, yeah, we'll uh, do the Siege of Philippopolis very soon. So one thing you want to be careful with, guys, is that this guy can die because he is 65. And if he does die, it spawns a pretty big garrison in there of just rebel troops. So do be wary of that. We are going to send our spy through this way. Just have a quick look at what's going on so we can see a little bit better what's going on down here and what's going on in Thrace. And do remember that we are trying for an alliance with the Tribali. So I am going to offer them some money. Say like a regular tribute of 200 for maybe five turns and just see. We see no benefit. Okay, no, us. they will not accept that. They're not going to offer anything else either. So we're going to ignore that for now. And then remember, with your diplomat, just try and get as much trade agreements, etc. with people as possible because you are surrounded by many people. Proposal. Could probably have tried to sell that trade agreement there, but I'm really not too bothered about trying to sell it. So Which we're going to go for that. 160 for our oh, map thanks. information. I mean, it's better than nothing, guys, right? It's better than nothing. So we're going to go talk to Pontic Pentapolis. We'll try that as well. I also want to get an alliance with the Gete up here, the Dacians. They are probably one of our major allies for the campaign because they come down from the north pretty hard if they want to. So, we have got that siege to do. Got our spy who's gone around this way. We've got our new Ronfai Foroi over here. So, with the rest of our money, let's also queue in maybe. Let's try for two Thracian Slingers, I think. Uh, it's Long Spearman in there. So, yeah. How much are these Slingers? Let's see. 1,190. I think we wait until we do the siege and then we choose what we want to do with our money. Philippopolis is a large town, so it's a lot better. So let's get into this siege, guys. Should be nice and easy. So the gate and walls are down, my friends. So we're going to try and get through with this unit over here. Hopefully we are fast enough to get out of the... I mean, if they keep stopping, then we're not going to be fast enough, are we? Jesus Christ, man. The one thing that you can, of course, be uh, be very good with, and the one thing that is the weakness of these units, of these Ronfei 4 or units, is the cavalry resistance. They are not good against cavalry. They do not have anything against cavalry, do they? I don't think. They're just armor-piercing, so, yeah, they don't have a bonus against cavalry or anything. So if we get our cavalry in, we can absolutely savage them. So let's get into them, especially while they are bloody... Doing the goddamn firing while they... Ah! 
goddamn sometimes this fucking game, man. <laughs> Jesus Christ. But there we go. Just tap them and they are broken already. So you can use that. That is their one weakness is the cavalry side. So, yeah, we've absolutely ruined them now, haven't we? So I think what we'll do is we'll send our cavalry around this way. Don't go that way. Go this way, guys. Still that, that way, please, <laughs> you imbeciles. We will send these guys around this way too. Are they going to run that way? They are fucking idiots, man. And uh, we will send the rest of these guys down over this way. Remember, they are very fast. So you've got to be, uh, got to be careful with them. And we'll send these guys over here. Right, we need to group all these guys together. And I'll see you in a second, guys, when we're set up. Remember, guys, by the time you get to this battle itself... You pretty much will have destroyed the Bessie. So you don't need to worry too much about losses because you're going to retrain pretty much straight after this. So you don't need to worry about it too much. However, I'd still recommend trying to save men because if you have enough, you can go after one of those little rebel settlements that are in the middle of your land to start with. So it's always nice to try and do that. I'm going to get these guys forward too. You guys can come forward as well. And let's see if we can bait these goddamn units into finally attacking us. Go on then, boys. Let's go. We've got our generals. No, not you. How do you still have men all the way back there? What are you doing, man? But hopefully we can fire at the Thracian Royal Bodyguards and get them off the town square. There we go. Turn around, guys. You're going to get shredded. There we go. Obviously, they got shredded. Are they going to go for more? Are they going to go for more? They are. Okay. Bit problematic. Not going to lie. But as long as we get them off the town square, that's all good. Especially these guys. Can these guys fire or not? Are they just going to stand there? I mean, that's not the great... Oh, there we go. That's a better fire. There we go. That's better, my friends. I think we should just rampage the old uh, Thracian royal bodyguards, to be honest. Because I think we'll do well against them. Like, as long as they're not charging, we should do well against them. And you guys can come through. You're also armor-piercing, remember? Your peltas are armor-piercing. So they should be fine. And like I say, you don't need to worry too much about what's going to happen here. Because, of course, you, uh, you're you going to be retraining very soon afterwards. There we go, guys. A clear victory. We killed the king and then they routed. But just look how much damage they did. So... Always remember, no matter how strong you think you are, enemy Romphiforoi are going to be brutal. So, no matter what, they're going to be brutal. But let's end the battle there, guys. Glorious victory. I'll see you back on the campaign map. So, with Philippopolis, I believe it is a large town. So, we are just going to occupy again. Now, you could enslave. I wouldn't recommend exterminating because you start with such a low population anyway. That it's probably worth just occupying this. The Bessie are now dead. They do have a level 4 recruitment. So that's going to give us some extra cash. And uh, yeah, we need to repair those walls straight away. Now, if you have enough troops, what I would recommend is going straight on to Madu Tenopolis over here. Because if you have enough troops, then you can take that, you know, sort of link up your land. There's also uh, Barro over here. Both of these are towns, though, and they don't have a lot of population. So they're not, you know, 100% necessary as uh, conquest. Now, we are going to leave a Peltas behind because it's so cheap. And that, unfortunately, is not enough. So we're going to have to go down to low. But we suddenly have a little bit of cash, don't we, my friends? A little bit of cash. So we're going to come straight back all the way to Adrissa. One good thing about this area is also the fact... That you are pretty much, you know, in reach of a lot of your settlements in one turn. So if you do get attacked, you can come back and react very quickly indeed. So let's go for... I think we're going to go for a long spin. We're going to spend our money on units for now because we need more units. And some more Romphi 4 I could go for some Light Lancers. They're always a good option. But the Romphi 4 I are just so powerful that we really can't turn them down. And eventually what we want to do is replace all of these Peltas with either Generals or uh, some of the Slingers. Because they are the cheapest garrison unit that we have available to us. 
So I think the plan now... So basically, when you get to this point, guys, there's a few things that you can do. And we'll go through them now. First of all is to clean up the middle of your territory because you're pretty much just surrounding two <laughs> rebel settlements. Not the prettiest border gore in the world either. Also stops you trading across your settlements here and having, you know, a backup bonus. So, for example, Diopolis here can only trade with these settlements down here and this one. It cannot trade with Maduotinopolis at all. So what that means is that also Corilopolis cannot trade with uh, Madutinopolis over here. can only trade with Adrissa and whoever's got a trade agreement. So the Asti and Kabile and uh, Suthopolis. So by blocking off the trade here, you are losing a bit of money. So you can go for that as well. Secondly, you can go further um, west, fight more Thracians. Now, I wouldn't recommend that. Uh, because this land is not exactly that rich. We do have some gold mines over here, but the rest of this land, like we've seen, is pretty darn poor and pretty small population land, and all it's going to do is bring pain and not much reward. Now, I would recommend then, at this point, to go east to conquer Thrace here and Byzantium and take all of these two rebel settlements too because they don't have that good garrisons. They have Greek garrisons rather than Thracian ones because they are very, um, you know, so they're very, very um, easy to beat with a Thracian army. Then your fourth option or your third option, I can't remember which option we're on, is to go after Kabile. I think we might try and snipe Kabile right away because Kabile's actually relatively rich it's a large town as well and is a fantastic area to become a recruitment hub so by sniping that right away after we've built these troops it's going to be a very very good little area that we can build into another recruitment hub because at the minute we only have one guys and it takes so long to build your recruitment up in this uh, version of the mod that you really need to start building it asap from the start so let's see here we can actually get land clearance so we're going to do that in philippopolis because it's already probably richer than some of these oh actually no it's not uh but of course we want those gold mines as soon as possible too so we will do that soon once we've sacked maybe uh kabile and the asti so let's end the turn guys let's see where we get to so we have a candidate for adoption. I would highly recommend, as long as they're not, you know, above 40, it's just accepting these guys, no matter what their traits are, because you lack characters so early on, you can get regicided very easily. And you also need more characters to garrison cities, to give you management, to give you more money, more population growth, and also relieve some of these garrisons of the troops that are in there, because you start with so few troops that you really do need to be getting uh, as many garrison troops as possible. Now, I have decided what we're going to do. We are going to go for Kabile because they have left a man outside the city. Oh dear, Kabile, I don't think you've seen my videos before, but I think that you may be the subject of a cheeky little draw-out battle. So we are going to pop straight up there. We're going to have a look at what's going on down here. Adrissa is slightly upset. So we're going to go down to normal for now. But you can see they've left a draw-out battle right there, which is pretty insane of them, I'm not going to lie. Where is my diplomat? He's up there. Yes, he's going to talk to the Gete. I was going to say, one thing to note, guys, is with the Thracians, the cultural generics, the Greek city-states, and the Thracians, always remember that... And there's also a cultural Anatolians as well, just a generic faction... Always remember that they are built to be passive to the player, unlike every other faction. So you can treat these guys as a buffer state. So it's really nice to have that buffer state down below us there. And we're going to keep that as is. Now, my reasoning for going for Kabile is because, like I say, Kabile is not hugely rich, but it's richer than these little towns in here. And also, look at the size of this garrison here. It's going to be a lot easier to take Kabile. It also removes a potential enemy from the map. So, of course, we're going to go for that one instead. So, let's go for a trade, right, and try to go... There we go. We see no benefit to us. Really? I gave you, like, 
600 gold, man. <laughs> okay, well, we'll keep trying for that. For now, though, we're going to come down and speak to the cultural Thracianos. And let's do this little battle here. This should not be too problematic. They do have, however, the Thracian Infantry Guard, which is a very, very good unit. So we're going to have to try and isolate that quite quickly and then move on towards the Zistaphoroi and the rest of the units. The rest of the army should not be too much of a worry, but those uh, Thracian Infantry Guard isolated should be okay, but let's see. So here we go. We're going to try and isolate this unit. And also, I'm not too worried about using pretty much all of our ammunition for this because this unit is so good that uh, I'm not too bothered by that. Once they're wiped uh, out... All we've got to deal with is, is a hoplite, which that will be easy for our Romphi 4 i And one of their own Romphi 4 i which if we can take out their cavalry, we shouldn't have too much of a worry. But look at that. Jesus Christ, they've been absolutely savaged. Let's save a little bit, at least, of our ammunition, especially for our cavalry. But there we go. Already dead. So let's go after them, chase them down, and then let's reform to fight these guys. Remember, we do not want these guys to escape. We want to kill them all, except potentially the general. That's the thing I'm worried about. Do Kabile only have one general? Because remember, this is a draw-out battle. If we kill the general and then they have no other generals, I feel like it will become a rebel settlement, which is awful for us. So I do need to be wary of that. So maybe we want to keep that general alive? If possible, if possible, obviously, don't worry about it too much. But if possible, we want to probably keep that general alive. So we're going to let our infantry deal with pretty much everything right here. And we're going to use our cavalry to try and scare that general off. So we're going to use him to maybe try to rout them with, of course, the Hippocontisti over here with their missiles. Same thing with the general. We're going to put them on fire at will for now. So they will fire a couple of shots. But I'm going to try to just rout this guy rather than kill him. That's going to be the difficult thing here, though. I feel like this is going to be very difficult to do. But we are going to try it. We have done it in another guide, haven't we? I believe it was the Achaean guide. You guys deal with them. You guys come forward too. You guys come forward. And, uh, yeah. Oh, our guys are routing. What was that? Zista Foroi, Really? Well, I'm glad we've got our long spearmen here because they're actually decent against cavalry. So we've got our generals over here. Let's go after the general's bodyguard and try to break him without killing him. That's going to be the difficult thing. So there goes our second unit, our long spearmen. Where's the rest of our Rumphy Foroi? Well, come over here, guys. Let's see if we can break this general. I really don't want to kill him, like I say. Maybe they do have another general somewhere else, though. That's the one other thing that might be the case. But there goes the Romphi 4 i 2. Everyone's routing. You can see how powerful the goddamn Romphi 4 i are. They are ridiculously powerful with the scares enemy infantry, enemy nearby, nearby enemy infantry. Like, even more powerful than uh, your own. Like, they, they're more powerful than you, really. It's, it's crazy. Right, general's gone. General's gone. We need, don't want to kill him. Get out of there. Now we're going to ch kill this Zista Foroi because they have been an absolute nuisance here, really, haven't they? Absolutely ruined two of our units. Goddamn bastards, honestly. Now let's kill this Romphi, this Romphi Foroi then. Um, you guys go fight them. They are just hoplites. They will not scare the enemy infantry. Goddamn, why can the AI do that? It's so annoying. Please. <laughs> please. Please, please, please. <laughs> The AI just is able to fire their missiles in fight. I know we can do it by doing some special little, like, detail commands, but very annoying, honestly, that they can do that. We're going to go straight in the back of the hoplites over here. That should break them. And then all we've got left is those guys. What I'm actually going to do is send you to deal with them straight away. You can see how quick these units are. We should have, I should have contrasted the, uh, the two things, basically. Okay, the hoplites are going to be a little bit more difficult to break than I thought. So, run by four right, let's go after them. And then, oof, our general got a little bit stuck in there then. You guys go after them. You guys get those guys. So, we did manage to save their general from dying, which is never something that I ever planned to do. But uh, it looks like it's going to happen. 
And it's been a pretty brutal battle. You can see just how powerful a unit of Romfei Foroi can be compared to, uh, compared to uh, you know, Macedonian Hoplites or whatever. So we'll chase them down. And we did manage to kill them. So at least it is a victory. So a pretty glorious victory. And those five men should be the five remaining men in the settlement. So we didn't regicide them. So it shouldn't be a rebel settlement. So that is fantastic. Let's get back on the campaign map. There we go. Perfect result for us. Ah, they did have another general. I should have looked a bit closer, but I didn't see that. So we would have probably taken the settlement. I don't know how that works, though, because once we've taken the settlement, they're dead. But they would die. They wouldn't die because they still do have a guy. So I guess we would have been okay. But all we're doing now is just, you know, it's one more turn to wait, basically. And that has brought us into the positive in terms of cash again. Now, do we have enough? Yeah, we are recruiting in the places that we can be. So I think it's still time to build up. In fact, we'll save our money, probably. Hmm. Yeah, because although let's build some land clearances. We may be able to build two, depending on the regions and the cost. Looks like we can only build one. Well, that's okay. That's not a problem at all. So let's end the turn there, guys. And let's get back to killing Kabile. Another candidate for adoption. And of course, we're going to accept them. This time, we're going to swap them out for the most useful garrison rather than, you know, something that uh, will make more money. We're just going to swap them for the most useful garrison. In fact... We're probably going to put them in Kabile as a garrison because Kabile is one of the larger places, towns that we'll have once we've taken it. So Philippopolis did get the land clearance. You can see that Kabile, rather than defending their own land, just decided to do that. I highly doubt they've got any more. So they killed 42. That's not a problem. And again, we're just going to occupy in Kabile and they are instantly rebelled over there. Now, we did take rather a large amount of damage. We've also got this building in here, so we're going to destroy that. We're going to repair that straight away, and we're going to build the Adrissian recruitment straight away, because they've got level one of all of this stuff. They've got the basic buildings in there, so that by building this, if we have a look at it, we are instantly going to be able to get long spearmen, Macedonian hoplites, archers, slingers, and some Greek units too. And then if we go to level two, we're going to have to upgrade some of our barracks and stuff, but we can get Romphophoroi and all that good stuff. So, I'm going to get you. Which one? Yeah, you're going to stay in there. You're going to go to Kabile, hopefully without going through the rebel area. There we go. In there. 50% garrison, apparently, which isn't great. But what I'm thinking we'll do is stick this long spearman in there for now. And after the unrest goes down, we should be okay. Everyone auto sort. And then what we're going to do is use the rest of our money to retrain these guys. Now, I'm going to try and spread some experience. If you hold control, guys, that's actually fantastic. It spreads some there. If you hold control and drag, you can merge these units. And you can see by doing that, we've gained a little bit of experience in there as well which is awesome that one's gained some experience it's not guaranteed to remain there after you retrain these boys but um you know it's uh, it's better than nothing <laughs> that's that's the best i can say about it to be honest <laughs> it is better than nothing isn't it and we can't actually retrain all of these guys so Hmm, that's a little bit annoying. Anything in any of these settlements that we missed that we could destroy, maybe, that would be worth it? Absolutely not. Nothing. This is the main issue with the Adrissians, honestly, um, is just the lack of cash early on. But if we have a look at our spy down here, we can see that all of this land here, we've got our Thracian buffer state there, but all of this land pretty much cutting off from there... So from Bisanthe up to Bize, up to Salmidesos. All of this land, pretty much all of it apart from Salmidesos and Bize, Bizye, Bizye, uh, <laughs> has ports. So this is where we're going to make our money initially in the campaign, guys. So that is where we're going to aim for next. Obviously, like I say 
uh, said earlier, you've got to always be on the lookout. If you do get attacked by, say, the Trabali or something like that, you're going to have to react to that and deal with it. But for now, while we are, you know, in a free position to do what we want, we want to go and attack down here, take all of this land, all of it, and, uh, you know, use the ports to our advantage because we do have some very good trade partners already. So we're going to keep that up. We're going to try for the Gete actually one more time. Apparently very demanding. What if I give you military access? No, nah, you don't like it, do you? You don't like it. So we are going to try go talk to the Thracians. Let's go for the trade rights balanced. That's good. That's going to bring us some more money. Apparently no alliance available. How about map information? Doesn't matter selling map information to the Thracians because uh, they're probably not going to use it, but that's okay. And we should go talk to the Ptolemies too. So let's end the turn, guys, and let's hope we can start making some actual money sometime soon. So we've got an alliance trade rights offer from the Dentalate. Now that may bring us to war with the Maidy, but honestly, we've got to take whatever friends we can get right now. So we are definitely oh, going to take that. Fantastic. And here come the Maidy with a trade rights offer as well. And oh, I suppose we'll accept it for now, but uh, very likely that they will attack us sometime soon. So here we are a couple of turns later, guys, and you can see the strain of retraining this army and what that has done to our coffers. We are now in the negative again, and that's why we need to get these ports. I want to stress one thing, guys. The meta in this version of the mod in 0.6 is that sea trade by far is the best way of increasing your income, the best way of making money, unless you are specifically going for gold mines and specifically going for high fertility regions like, you know, Patavium, like the Nile Delta. But if you are just generally playing in the area in which you start, sea trade by far is the meta for making money. Now, I wanted to also, um, you know, illustrate one point here. Um, and that is the fact that, you know, we could go for the Asti right now. And that would be a relatively okay battle. We'd probably win, but we'd be pretty worn down afterwards. Now, there is an opportunity that's presented to us here, though. Captain Kerfis over here is presenting us a draw-out battle for Byzantium. So what I wanted to say is just be flexible, guys. Never... You know, even if you've got a plan, if something presents itself to you as an opportunity, do not ignore it. Just go straight for the opportunity rather than sticking, you know, um, you know, strongly to your plan. Because if I go for the Asti now, I very likely will take Bizia. We'll come back, have to retrain. We'll probably not have much money. Uh, maybe just a little influx from destroying whatever buildings they've got. This This building they've got in there. Uh, but if we go for this here, should be a relatively easy fight because they're Greeks and the Thracians absolutely curb stomp the Greeks. And then if we go straight onto there, we can take out Byzantium 2 pretty darn quickly. So yeah, we'll take that opportunity rather than worrying about the Asti too much. So let's go for that straight on there and let's do the draw out battle. Should be nice and easy, my friends. Very quick as well. Should be a relatively quick battle here. We are getting slightly peppered by some of their units. So we are going to use our cavalry in a slightly different way. We do need to kill all of this army, remember, and the uh, general here too, Elarsus of Naupactos. But apart from that, we should be good. We're also going to uh, get these guys angry, nice and angry. You deal with them, and we are going to go and flank him as well. And then the Slingers, get not Slingers, the Peltas. You can see they really don't do well against Cavalry, but everything else, they're absolutely fantastic with. You guys attack there. We'll come through to attack these Peltas too. Let's get the back of this Greek General and make sure that he stays away. Let's get into there and gets killed. Go straight for the Peltas then if you want. Looks like we're going to be doing that. Good. Go, go, go. Go in there. Should be able to break these guys pretty quickly. Everyone else over here should not be a problem at all. These guys withdrawing? No. Kill those guys. Kill those guys. Kill them all. Kill them all. We need to make sure we kill that general. So we'll leave two guys to chase after them. 
We're also going to get this guy over here to chase down these guys. You guys fire there. There we go. Look at them all routing, all running. You can just see how powerful some of these, you know, units are. We've hardly lost, I think, in this whole, like, battles, these Hippocontisti, even though they're pretty much just progemoi, we've lost about, I don't know, two or three of them. And it's not been many. Oh, now we've lost about 20, probably. But, yeah, it's not bad at all. Ah, god damn! These Peltas escaped. That's the general dead, though. That's fantastic. You guys get in there. Make sure we kill literally everyone else. We cannot afford to let any more escape because it looks like we're not going to have done the draw out battle then. That is incredibly annoying, but hopefully it's enough. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Guys, fire some javies there. In fact, that's going to be easier. Deal with that. There we go. Ah, god damn it. A hundred men are going to be left inside the settlement. That is incredibly annoying, but it should be a really easy... It's just going to be Greek Peltas, so it should be a very easy battle, nonetheless. And god damn it, we cannot actually use our movement points, even with the general and the uh, cavalry to siege it down. So we're going to waste one more turn. Oh my god, could this have gone any worse, really? Jesus Christ. Well, what we're going to do is put our spy in there just to try and open the gate so we don't need to wait another turn. Not guaranteed, however, but it's worth a try for now, isn't it? So we can actually siege them down this time. And unfortunately, the goddamn spy did not open the gates. Well, what a waste of time. For some reason, though, we did gain money, even though it was saying we run the negative. So that's one good thing. But goddamn, this is annoying <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> We're also going to get a slinger in there. We're going to try and run this guy out now as well. Can he leave? No, he can't. Still an unhappy place, Kabile, but that's fine. We're going to try and take Perinthos and then go straight for Byzantium. Then what we're going to do is probably take Celembria and Salmidesos before going for Bizia. But we shall see, guys. We shall see. There's also this over here, Basante. Not too bad of an army to beat with your Thracian army as well so do bear that in mind this looks difficult to beat but with the thracian boys not too bad at all and we got offered the alliance by the Gete. that is fantastic Thanks. absolutely Welcome, we're going to accept that i wonder whether we can sell them some more map information as well just for a bit of cash but Almost there we go fantastic so we've taken the first byzantium settlement we're on the second one we did do a little auto-resolve battle outside, so that's why these guys are slightly damaged. They did kill 102, but that's really not a problem. Now, the thing with these ones is, because they are Greek, it is worth this time to either exterminate or enslave. So we are going to enslave. Now, that has expanded a couple of towns. In fact, three of our towns are now ready to expand, which is not ideal. We are going to get a little bit of cash back from this now, let's have a look at what we have in this army now. Now, we have a relatively decent amount of troops still, I would say, for a Thracian army. So, we're going to pop out of the city. Looks like we can't really leave without... We'll take the cavalry, actually. 60% in there. That's okay. Now, the key thing here, guys, is that these areas have ports. And this is going to make us a load of money. I know it's only saying 39 gold, but we do actually have trade agreements with the Ptolemies, the Seleucids. We need to get trade agreements with Chios, all that sort of thing. I didn't realize Byzantium had spread across the way, so that's slightly annoying. But what we're going to do is go straight for Celembria now, and then probably go back for retraining after this, and then go for the Asti and the Thinians over here in Salmidesos, where we can probably get Thinoi Clubmen, actually. Let's have a look here, though. Can we get the Thinoi Club boys? No, we can't. I think it will only be in Salmidesos there. That's fantastic. I can't wait for that. So let's have a look at what places have been built and expanded. So Bessa Para, 3,200 for each one. Which is quite a lot. So we're going to go for Diospolis because that's slightly more upset. 
We're also going to go for Suthopolis there too. But you can see instantly by taking these two regions, literally two, before we took these regions, we were on minus 500. Now we're on plus 4,600, which is just insane, guys. Like, these ports are so valuable. Uh, to you that it, it's not worth doing anything other than taking them when you can so uh, let's end the turn guys And let's see where we get to So the rebels did attack us that's kind of to be expected, but honestly, I know it doesn't lie We've got much but trust me guys These units are so powerful so so powerful so we're gonna fight this I'm gonna show you how powerful these units are even though they're so damaged as well. The key thing is not allowing the cavalry really to get a charge off, but apart from that, we should be able to beat these guys relatively handily here. So let's get in the battle, let's defend, and let's see what we can do. So key thing we're going to do here, guys, is try to pressurize them early on with our guys, rather than letting them attack us with their, uh, with their missiles, because they have a lot of missile troops here. We want to pressure these Greek hoplites, get rid of them, and then use our cavalry to deal with them. I do want to be very wary of that Zistaphoroi, however. So we're going to go on to the Greek hoplites there. We're going to come around this way. And I'm going to try and use my cavalry to fire predominantly at the Zistaphoroi without worrying too much about actually charging them. So we're going to do that. We're also going to turn you off fire at will for now so we can actually get some firing off at the Zistaphoroi. Here go the men, though, charging in finally. That should be nice and good. Hopefully they can hold the line for long enough uh, so that we can go and deal with the rest of the Zistaphoroi before turning on the enemy. We're going to turn fire at will on. I want everyone here to fire at the Zistaphoroi for now. No, the Zistaphoroi, guys. Why are they charging? God damn, that's very annoying, I'm not going to lie. Why did you charge there, General? <laughs> did I tell you to charge? I mean, that's broken two of the units, but not the Zistaphoroi. That's the, that's the unfortunate thing. Zistaphoroi was the one to chart that we wanted to break. But uh, god damn, why did the General do that? That is so dumb. <laughs> like, I literally was like, no, don't do that. But if they're engaged, we're going to recharge them. They do have another General on the way. Problem being with all these, like, light units here, they're going to, like, stick around and probably come back from the old fight. So if we can kill that Zistaphoroi, that's actually a very, very good uh, good charge we got there. Let's come back. Let's go deal with those Greek Peltas quickly. Here goes this unit into the side there. Kill the Prodromoi. They are fools. Probably won't be able to actually catch those guys. That's the annoying thing. Let's go for that. Fire your missiles, guys, and then charge. Fire, 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 men. We'll rally the general so he doesn't get killed. We don't know where he is, actually. I didn't see him there. Hopefully, we can break this. Goddamn captain is an absolute beast. You guys need to fucking follow as well. Is that my general or his? Is that my general or his? I'm hoping it's his. <laughs> Goddamn. Guys, like, follow up. Okay, there we go. They're broken now. Let's kill all of them. Let's come around this way and let's deal with these Greek hoplites. You guys need to chase them. This is the problem. The problem here is we're not going to be able to chase anyone down too much. But hopefully we can kill the people in the city so that we can take the city. Because we do actually, we are actually sieging down the city, aren't we? So let's go after those guys. We should be fast, fast moving enough to deal with them pretty easily. Right, guys. War cry, though. War cry. I don't want you to uh, worry too much. You guys get there. You guys get there. You guys get there. And we're going to chase these guys down for a little bit. I think we can deal probably with the rest of these units up here. So let's get there. Let's also war cry everyone that we can while they're out of range of our missiles. And then... God, guys. Go. Just go through them. Like, honestly... That's not how you pursue them. You're just standing behind them doing fuck all. Right. Get these guys back here. Let's go. Should be able to fire now, guys. Should be able to fire. Should be a relatively decent volley if you can. Would also like you to fire at the Greek general's bodyguard. Let's come around this way then. Guys, just get them on the way. 
Then these guys, if they want to come up this way. Go, 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 go. Go, 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 guys. Go, go, go. And we're going to fire in the back there. We're also going to come round and fire in the back too. You guys are going to come all the way this way. You guys are just chasing down people. Apparently, incredibly inefficiently. Incredibly inefficiently. Really shit. Shit job you're doing there. Terrible fucking job. Well done, you fucking idiots. Jesus Christ, Jeremy. Four Nans. That's insane. Right, kill these guys. Kill these guys. Kill them. Kill them all. Kill them all. War cry. War cry. They're still eager. They're probably going to be eager until that general dies. So they're going to do the war cry. Intimidated by nearby enemy. Remember how powerful that is. Rally the men so you don't bloody charge into them yourself. There we go. That was awful, awful, awful charge. I think we're just going to save our general then for now. And not do anything about that. Uh, I don't... The thing is, I don't think we need to pursue them too badly. Guys, are you going to charge in or, or what? That would be nice. Guys, there we go. We should be fully surrounding them here. We just got to kill that general. Uh, you guys just enjoy yourselves chasing down the enemy. Go after them now. These guys can come over here. Get the rally off. And then victory should be ours, my friends. Well, it was pretty goddamn close in the end. But I think we did show how powerful the Rom 5 4 Roy can be. 192 soldiers. That's all that's left. They did escape with 100 for the big army. But the one in the city is fully vanquished. So that should be very good for us. Let's get back on the campaign map. So for this one, I think we're going to enslave again. So that's pretty good. And we did get a candidate for adoption. That's fantastic, actually, because we 100% need someone governing down here. You can see we've got no one in here. Also, both of these goddamn cities are pretty upset right now. We are getting the Shrine to Dionysus. I thought we were getting in both. Huh. I guess not. We can get the tavern or the sewers, though. Both. It's 5% for the sewers, though. And the tavern is 10%. Well, I think we'll go for the tavern for now. How are you looking? 35% is not too bad, actually. Um, and we did get this guy. So what we're going to do? Pop you in there. That makes that happy. Can I leave with them or not? No, still only 50% if we do that. So let's have a look for that secondary general. Where are you? You, you can get in there. That's made it only 50% for now. Uh, and then do we have, yeah, we've got long spearmen in here. So what they're going to have to do is just replace someone else. So they can go into Celembria. I think we can do it, basically, is what I'm trying to say. I think we're all right. I think we can do it. What we are going to do, though, is get another Romfei 4. In fact... I'm going to get another Light Lancer with the money that we have. And then over here, you can see, this is why we wanted Kabile to be a recruitment hub. Because instantly we can recruit all of these guys. We're going to get another Slinger as a garrison troop. We're transgressing against the Thracians and the Asti. Not too bad. Then do we have enough money to build that? We don't. But is there anything in here that we can destroy? No, absolutely not. Oh, this is the settlement that we just took, isn't it? No, not at the minute anyway. So, that's okay. We may even lose some unrest next turn in here. So that we can then move on to the next one. This is my agent. So, we're going to pop up this way. And, you know, public order is going to be an issue there. But look how much money we're making now. That's not too bad at all, is it, guys? And that's with this settlement being blockaded already. So, yeah, we really just need to get all these guys retrained. And then we're going to be... Hunky dory, my friends. Hunky dory. I was going to say as well, guys, this is one of the major things that you do struggle with as a nation like this, as well, a small nation. There we go. As soon as we get those guys in, these guys are incredibly happy. 60% uh, still in there. That's all. That's not ideal, is it? I mean, can we leave with those guys? Oh, we can. So let's go into Byzantium. There we go. We've made everywhere happy in a turn. 
But yeah, garrisoning these areas is genuinely one of the toughest parts of this campaign because you are pretty much surrounded by enemies. There's no real areas that you can just leave uh, as ungarrisoned. And you can even see up here we're getting in, uh, you know, problems with public order. There's not really anywhere we can leave just completely ungarrisoned. On top of that, you know, getting garrison troops takes two turns, and you're going to be expanding faster than you, can, than you can really produce garrison troops. So that's going to be a massive, massive I issue for you, uh, you know, going forward. Let's repair that. It's going to cost a little bit of cash, which is a bit annoying, uh, but that's fine. We're also going to try and build that now. Now, that's going to stop some of our retraining. But we'll be okay. We'll be able to do it next turn. And remember, you can always, you know, kind of slow down the campaign between these little bouts of conquest. Just have a little chill out for a little bit. Retrain your troops for a couple of turns. Reassess what's going on. Because I'm going to reassess now what's the best path to take. And it is probably taking out the Asti and then taking out Salmadesos. We do want a uh, ceasefire over there. But uh, that's not a problem at all. We may even come across across the bridge to go and do that. But oh, it's it's a little bit messy over here, isn't it? We trade with Kizikus. That should give us some cash indeed. But yeah, it's a little bit messy over there. Let's go for that. Nope, really? Okay, well, we'll try and get across when we've got space. <laughs> One thing you'll notice, guys, is that Tylus constantly, after you get the ceasefire with them initially will constantly offer you an alliance. Now, in my opinion, it is better to have the alliance with the Gete than it is Tylus. So I'm going to reject it, but it's up to you guys whether you think it's worth it in your game or not. And it looks like we've been attacked by Pontic Pentapolis, guys. So, uh, yeah, so you've always got to adjust based on, of course, what's happening. Like, I was going to go after the Asti, but now, of course, we're going to go after the Pontic Pentapolis, aren't we? Probably also try and clean up that finally now as well. We've got Megalopolis and Militus that have uh, just come out. And we've got a couple of areas that have just popped out too. Now, let's have a look at what their army is. It's a Greek army, guys. So remember, your Thracians are going to do an absolute job on any Greeks that they come across. So, uh, yeah, you're going to be pretty darn good against them. Raizdos is now 58, and I do worry about him slightly because, uh, yeah, that's, that's quite old. So, uh, yeah, we want to keep him going for as long as possible. Uh, but, yeah, we'll go up and attack those guys. You can see that is not too bad of an army to beat with our fucking Romfei Foroi, who are absolute beasts. <laughs> that is really not bad. We've also got a unit of the Thracian Light Lancers now to uh, build up our forces. But I think, honestly, guys, at this point, all you have to do is just react to what happens and then go and crush whoever you want to crush. I would crush out the Asti. I would take these two rebel settlements and I would go up through Pontic Pentapolis. This army is not going to be a worry. And if that army actually sieges down to Belton, what I would do is fight this army and then maybe just stop in Kabyle for a little bit and see whether they want to come and siege us down because we could ruin them if they wanted to siege us down in there. Definitely, we could do some cheeky little things in there. But yeah, Pontic Pentapolis overall shouldn't be too much of a worry. I'd also like to take these three settlements very quickly sometime soon. But I think uh, we're in a decent spot now, guys. I think I've shown you how you can survive. Obviously, economically as this nation, that is the biggest threat to you, really, is economically you are in a very tenuous position. So getting these uh, areas very quickly is fantastic. And then once you have got them, going up now that Pontic Pentapolis has killed us, getting all, uh, not killed us, attacked us, getting all of these juicy Greek settlements along the Pontos Yuxinos, along the Black Sea, is an absolute gold mine. getting all of these. Because you're going to be trading with yourself and getting an absolute fortune from it, while the Gete deal with Tylus 
in the back as well. So I think that's the best way forward for you at this point. Once you've squared off Thrace here, once you've killed the Bessie, then you can go and deal with Pontic Pentapolis. And that was what I was going to, you know, recommend anyway. But anyway, guys, uh, difficulty-wise, I think Adrissians is an interesting one. Because I think for an experienced player, I'd give it a 2. For a less experienced player or less aggressive player, it is certainly at least a 3. Because of your economic situation right from the start. But remember, you can get back a lot of economy from taking these ports. From destroying buildings, destroying recruitment buildings, etc. Making sure... Like, like, for example, like in Selimbria, if I'm really playing meta, like, we don't need that. That's going to give us an extra load of cash. Like, in Byzantium, I probably would build a recruitment hub. But over here, like, we don't need that practice range. So, let's get rid of that. Now, instantly, we have money. So, you know, there's plenty of ways that you can get your money doing this, guys. You don't need to be poor as the Adrissians. And, of course, once you've taken Pon uh, Pontic Pentapolis, you'll be incredibly rich, actually. These are very rich settlements, and they have a lot of trade. So, you're going to be doing very well. But anyway, guys, thank you very much for watching. It's been a pleasure as always. Please do like and subscribe. It really does help the channel out. And I will see you all again on the next video.